The topic of this video is graphing transformation techniques, horizontal shifts. To move a graph left h spaces, replace each x in its equation with x plus h in parentheses. To move a graph right h spaces, replace each x in its equation with x minus h in parentheses. When a graph moves left or right, every point on the graph moves left or right. When you move a graph left h spaces, subtract h from the x coordinate of every point. When you move a graph right h spaces, add h to the x coordinate of every point. You might have noticed that left is associated with x plus h, whereas right is associated with x minus h. This appears to be backwards of what we might expect. We will learn why in the next example. All right, let's look at our example. If you move the basic function f of x equals x squared left three spaces, what would the new equation and graph look like? All right, let's begin with f of x equals x squared, which is shown in this table of points here on the left and is shown in gray on this graph. According to the process described above, we should turn each x into parentheses, and inside those parentheses, we should put x plus 3 because we're moving to the left three spaces. So this would create the following expression on the right-hand side, x plus 3 in parentheses squared. And because we now have a new function, we've changed the name from f to g. To create this graph, we take the points associated with f of x equals x squared and subtract 3 from each of its x coordinates to get the points of g of x equals x plus 3 in parentheses squared. Let's look at that now. So here's our table of points for our parent function, our basic function, our library function. These are the x's and the y's associated with f of x equals x squared, the square function. Since we are moving left 3, we subtract 3 from all of the x coordinates. Let's do this from bottom to top. 2 subtract 3 is negative 1. 1 subtract 3 is negative 2. 0 subtract 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 subtract 3 is negative 4. And negative 2 subtract 3 is negative 5. Notice that the y values do not change here, only the x values, because we're moving to the left. So we now have a new set of ordered pairs shown right here, x and g of x. These are the x's and these are the y's associated with this equation. And so we get ordered pairs like negative 3 comma 0, which you can see matches perfectly on the graph. The gray graph moved three spots to the left, and therefore, the x-intercept, which used to be at 0, is now at negative 3, and we get the point negative 3, comma, 0. Looking at this blue curve, you can also see negative 5, 4 is on the graph, negative 4, 1 is on the graph, negative 2, 1 is on the graph, and negative 1, 4 is on the graph. All right, that's our first example. Now... I'd like you to take a notice of something from these pairs of graphs here, right? The gray graph has an x-intercept at 0. The blue graph has an x-intercept at negative 3. Note the two x-intercepts, the red dots on the graph. You might recall that an x-intercept has a y-coordinate of 0. So, to find the y-intercept of this equation for g of x, we replace the y in essence, the g of x with 0, and we solve for x. So g of x is equal to this. g of x is the same as y. Replace y with 0, and then solve. So if we want to get 0 here, then the thing inside the parentheses needs to be a 0. What value of x, when you add 3, will give you 0? Well, the answer is negative 3. x has to be negative 3, so that when you add 3, you get 0 so that when you square it, you get 0. And this is the reason why x plus h represents a move to the left. It's backwards of what you would think. The best advice that I can give you when working with horizontal shifts is to simply remember that the equation part feels backwards of what you would expect, but the coordinates part 
feels perfectly normal for what you would expect.